Have you ever tried to carry water in a sieve? It doesn't work very well, but I'm gonna make it work. In the third century BC, the Vestal Virgin Tucha was accused of breaking her vow of chastity. She was about to be buried alive as punishment, but to prove her innocence, she just had to prove she still had her magic Vestal Virgin powers. So to prove this, she famously carried water in a sieve from the river to the temple without spilling any water through the net. And I think I know how she did it. The surface of water kind of acts like it has a skin on it. There's this elasticity to it. The elasticity comes from the fact that water molecules have a strong attraction to each other. When they're surrounded with each other, the molecules pull on each other the same in all directions. But for the ones on the surface, there isn't anything pulling from the top. This lack of upward neighbors results in a net inward force. As a result, the surface area of the liquid is reduced, creating a skin-like layer. But if that's the case, then why does water get squished through the tiny holes of the sieve so easily? Well, it's not because of the water surface tension, but it's because the water's attracted to the sieve material itself. The water sticks to the surface, and the surface is what sucks it through the hole. So all we have to do to stop this is to make it so that the water isn't attracted to the material anymore. Then the surface tension in the water will stop it from being squished through the holes instead of sucking it through the holes. So let's try it. I'm going to spray it with a hydrophobic coating called Never Wet. First, let's look at the non-hydrophobic version. See what happens when we just put a few drops of water on it. Pretty much just goes right through it. Okay, now let's see the hydrophobic version. Whoa. <laughs> look how much water I can put in it. <laughs> no way. Look at that. It doesn't go through at all. Wonder how much I can pour in here. What? It's not going through it, look. <laughs> this is so weird. If you think that I'm able to pour the water in here because it's kind of blocked at the bottom or something, watch what happens when I pour the water in really hard. It just goes right through it. <laughs> but it's carrying water still. So if I don't force it through, it won't go through. Okay, look how much water I can hold in here. It's pretty much the entire water bottle here. Watch, if I just pull up really hard at once, it'll go through. <laughs> once I get only a little bit in it, it's like I can't even get it to go through at all. It doesn't have enough pressure. Even pulling up really fast, it's like I can slosh it all around and it doesn't go through. I'm gonna use some colored water so you can see this a little bit better. Look at the bottom of it. <laughs> so watch, I can actually get the water to come through by getting it attracted to this paper towel. Or if I move it up really fast, watch. Okay, this just gave me the coolest idea ever, a hydrophobic fish net. So the reason we use a net when you fish fish out of your fish tank is because you want to be able to catch the fish in it so the water needs to be able to go through it. So if I just make this hydrophobic, if I push really hard, the water will go through it just fine. But then once I pick it out of the water with the fish in it, it will leave a little bit of water for the fish. Okay, I don't actually have a fish to try this on, so we'll catch a troll instead. Now there's obviously a limit to how much water we can carry. To calculate how much water we can hold, we just need to see how much pressure a drop of this diameter can hold before the skin breaks. This is called the Laplace pressure. In this case, with a spherical drop of water, then we get that the Laplace pressure is four times the surface tension divided by the diameter of the hole. So this pressure will be equal to the hydrostatic pressure, which is density times gravity times height. 
So this basically tells us how much pressure is contained within a drop of water. The smaller the hole, the more pressure it can hold. So if I have tiny holes, then I can hold a lot of water. This also means that anytime you have a bubble of something, there's actually a pressure inside the bubble due to this elastic skin of the water. The pressure is proportional to the size of the bubble. The smaller the bubble, the higher the pressure. You can see that the pressure is higher in smaller bubbles if I connect a small bubble to a larger bubble. The smaller one will deflate and push the gas into the bigger bubble. So I can prove this to you by using this little contraption here. So I can blow in this end of it, it'll come in here and it'll blow bubbles on both ends of here. But inevitably one of them's gonna be smaller. And then I can stop blowing and you'll see that the one that has the smaller bubble will blow up the one with the bigger bubble. A one millimeter bubble has almost negligible pressure inside of it. But for small bubbles, the pressure gets extremely large. For a 0.3 micrometer bubble, the pressure inside is nine atmospheres. Because small bubbles have higher pressure, that means that nano droplets will react differently than bigger droplets because they're at a higher pressure inside. So the chemistry and physics of small drops or bubbles becomes much more complicated because of this higher pressure inside. It's amazing to remember how strong these forces on a drop of water really can be. So strong that you can even carry water in a sieve. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.